this evening's meeting of the Finance and General Purposes Committee of Biggleswade Town Council. Um, I'll start by uh, reminding all attendees that this is a formal meeting. Uh, members of the public will be given an opportunity to speak during the public open session, but not at other times. The meeting is being filmed and by being present, attendees are deemed to have agreed to be filmed and to the use of those images and sound recordings. I can advise that attendees should not disclose any personal information of individuals as this would infringe the data protection rights of that individual. May I please ask everyone to mute their microphones when not speaking. So apologies for absence. We have apologies from Councillor Grant Fage. No others? Okay. Um, so declarations of interest. Um, to receive statutory declarations of interest from members in relation to disclosable pecuniary interests and non-pecuniary interests. So are there any interests to declare? Nope. Okay. Um, chairman's announcements. I don't believe I've got any announcements. Brings on to the first public open session. No one online, so we move on. No invited speaker. Members' questions. Councillor Knight. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I read on social media on the 6th of March that uh, the Town Council has started a public wor works loan board consultation for up to £325,000, uh, which runs until the 3rd of April. Uh, on the 18th of March, I read that there's been some fraud or theft involving our car parking machines in the Dan Albon car park. Again, I read about this on social media. I thought officers had committed to keeping members informed. So I wonder, was the Chair of Finance and General Purpose aware of these incidents before they were posted on social media? And is social media really the correct way for members to find out about important information like this? So, no, I wasn't, is the answer to the first part of that question. Mr. Clark, why am I finding out about things on social media? This conversations has made clear that we were going out to PWLB consultation. Note the Chair of Finance and General Purpose wasn't aware. Well, certainly I assume that I'd briefed members before connected to this. Uh, so yes, I thought I'd brief members. And in relation to the criminal activity at Den Alban Car Park, should members be aware of that? Because I know not all members are on social media. I wasn't aware of any criminal activity in Dan Alban Car Park. Yeah, perhaps Mr. Clark needs to be on social media. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I rest my case. Well, Members, please be notified in advance well, of social media. Thank you. Can we comment about Dan Alban? Uh, I, I was made aware of this and I reported it to the police and uh, through through 101. When did this happen? Uh, within the last two weeks. During my period of absence? I believe so. Right. And Karim is aware of this? Again, I believe so. Right. Right. Well, we take that on board. That should have been communicated. Actually, my understanding for members' benefits is criminals were essentially posing as town council staff in Dan Alban really? car park. Uh, offering to help uh, people who were buying car parking tickets and then stealing money from their credit cards. Okay. And I read about it on social media. Not okay. really acceptable. Okay, any further members' questions? Okay. Oh, Councillor Russell. Following on from what's just been said, are we putting notices in Dan Alban car park warning people to not accept help from strangers? I think Heise is going to answer that one. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, we certainly can do. Perhaps the town centre manager could stay at the table tonight. Yeah, I I have no objections if no other members have objections. I don't, so that's fine. Okay, um, we'll move on then to um, minutes and recommendations of meetings. So to receive the minutes of the Finance and General Purposes Committee meeting held on the Tuesday, the 17th of January, 2023. So we'll go through them first for accuracy. 
Um, so on page number five of the pack, page six, page seven, page eight, page nine, page 10. Okay. Um, so can I have a proposal, uh, Councillor Russell? Yep. Yes, I propose we accept the minutes. Okay, and seconder, Councillor Knight. All in favour that we accept. Okay, so going through for matters arising then on page five, page six, page seven, page eight, page nine, page 10. Okay. That brings us on to items for consideration, item 9A, the new grants policy. So, um, Mr. Youngs, do we have any updates to report? It really, really is as it is in the report. Um, just from a, 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 an officer point of view, it would be nice to, to get these adjustments through. Um, most of the, the suggested changes are to do with changing the dates, just to make them more, more specific um, and therefore more user-friendly. Okay. Um, Councillor Alban. Yeah, I've got a comment. Um, this was in, in the original um, grants policy and also in the updated one. So on page 17, under important dates, it says the application to be considered on a twice yearly basis each January. So that doesn't read quite right. So I, I, I would propose that each January is removed. And um, I think it might, grammar isn't my uh, special subject, but I think it might be accordance rather than accord. Perhaps we could create two Januaries. Make it easy. <laughs> may, may I just make a suggestion on, on that point? If we said um, in January and September each year in accordance with the following calendar, that I think ties in with the other explanation set out in the document. That, that would mean repeating it. I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would say that... Um, Councillor Arbour's suggestion to just remove each January because it actually says further down when we consider them in the in in that. Okay. Councillor Russell. With that amendment, can I move the recommendation, please? Okay. So the amendment is um, that we remove each January and accord becomes accordance. Um, any other, do we have a seconder for that? Councillor Foster, any further comments? Councillor Strawn? Yes, on page 18, uh, is it correct in the first line that it should be for the financial year 2022-23, as we're dealing with it in looking at it for the future rather than historically, I believe? So it should, I think it should, I, I would have thought it should have been 2023-24. Yeah. Happy for that amendment as well. Yeah. Any further comments? In that case, we'll go to a vote. All those in favour? That's unanimous. So we move on to the next item, 10B, Unity Trust Bank update. Sorry, no, 9B, the Orchard Centre Higher Agreement. Anything further to add to that, Mr. Lord? No. no, no, thank you. Any, uh, Councillor Alban again. Yeah, um, sorry to be majoring on grammar and I may not, may not be right this. So um, the point eight, which is one um, has been changed. I'm not quite sure what it's been changed from. I tried to find it on SharePoint, but uh, failed, I'm afraid. So um, it says the, high, the hirer cannot overstay their allocated session time. I think it might be better to say may not overstay because anybody can. 
Shit, no. Okay. Any other comments, Councillor Strong? Yes, we seem to have got two 23s, one on page 23 and one at the end on page 24. Um, uh, that should be a 35. Should that be 35 then? or should it be done numbered or? Well, yeah, 35, I think. Yeah. Councillor Russell. I don't have a suggestion of an amendment, but I'm just slightly concerned that the new um, point 25 is a bit off-putting if we're trying to get new business um, business clients at the Orchard Centre, because they're more likely to want the equipment that's, that's there. But if that has to be in there because of insurance, then so be it. But um, I wouldn't want to put people off. My assumption would be in uh, would be that that's in there to ensure that we can't be sued for any consequential losses as a result of breaching contracts. So, I mean, Councillor Strong might be able no. It's to just more a question of why it's been inserted, added now and not in there originally. Has there been some event like that that has occurred that has highlighted the issue? Because it looks as though it's something that's come up recently. Uh, yeah, one one speaker out of the two in the main hall wasn't functioning correctly. It didn't directly impact on the high risk session because the other speaker was still working and they were down that end of the hall. But it's just for future instances. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think I guess if we, I would assume that officers would, on a case by case, is agree potentially to refund or whatever if they weren't able to hold the session they had planned because of it but this would pr protect us from them saying well i've lost all this income as a result of it or whatever so Councillor Russell. in that case we need to be sure that we're checking our equipment regularly hmm. Hmm. Councillor Knight. So being a little bit pedantic then, so number 25 currently reads, although every effort will be made, can I suggest that it should be, uh, although reasonable efforts will be made, because if you say every effort, mm. you can get into a, a, a pickling court with that one. Yep. Councillor North. No, just another detail, under, under 34, paragraph 34. Bullet point seven and eight, it says attend anyone. I think anyone should be two words, should be just, just separated as two words rather than one word. Yeah, so, so that it should be separate words, yeah, on both of those. Okay, any other? No, they are, they, is anyone and not anyone is what it means in that sentence. Anyone booking in that room, not any individual person. Yeah. Councillor North is correct. <laughs> um, would anyone like to make a proposal then at this stage? Councillor North. Well, I propose that subject to the uh, amendments that have been uh, proposed just now, that these are accepted and adopted. Do we have a seconder for that? Councillor Foster. I will, does anyone have any further comments to make before we go to the vote? Sorry? <laughs> uh, well, good question. Um, does anyone have any further comments? Otherwise I'll go through what the amendments are as I've captured them. So the first was on point eight, the highway should not overstay. Um, then we had on point 25, although reasonable effort will be made instead of every. Um, and then on um, point 34, on the two bullet points around the maximum numbers, it will be a space between any and one on both of those, and then renumbering of the 
uh, item 23 on page 24 to actually be item 35. Councillor Foster. So I think when is probably the correct word, if everyone's happy with that. Yeah. Councillor Strong. Just put something on item 30 on page 23. Health and hygiene suddenly leapt out and hit me between the eyes. Um, it, why, why it's in ca capitals there in that way, I don't know. I think it's, I don't think it's, I think it's just normal, lowercase. Okay. Yeah. Happy with that? Yeah. <laughs> Were you, Councillor Russell? Yeah. Um, on um, paragraph 32, I don't understand, um, it's probably my ignorance, but why are we talking about the children under the age of eight there? Um, because under safeguarding, fit and proper persons should be up to the age of 16. So there's specific legal requirements for under eights in regards to the Children Act 1989, which is why that was put in there originally. I think, yeah, that that... So there are legal requirements for under eights. But there are legal requirements for safeguarding as well. I'm, I'm, yeah. I, you know, I understand what you're saying yeah. about that particular act, but, you know, um, children of nine or 10 or mm. 11 would, would need to be <clears throat> properly protected as well. So if we're asking that the hirer should have the proper processes in place. So, so I think the, um, yeah, I mean, I... Yeah, I mean, I guess that's a question for officers then. But I mean, my view is that the reason that clause is in there is because of specific legal requirements under the Children's Act, which only applies to under eights. Yes, where there are children between eight and 18, then there are general safeguarding requirements, but it's on different legislation, I would guess. Perhaps we should be aware of, of asking hirers to have proper safeguarding arrangements in place overall, as well as referring to this act. Um, Councillor Strawn. Perhaps it's, it could be considered to be widened so that it, the hirer should ensure that any activities for children comply with the provisions of the Children's Act 1989. That way it covers over eights as well as under eights. They've got to comply with legislation in any event. Um, so I think that's possibly a bit restrictive on rereading it and thinking about it. So if they've got to comply with legislation, just have it as comply with the provision to the Children Act 1989 as amended in case there's anything like that. Um, so the way I think That. Mr. Chairman, if I suggest you just take out under eight years of age. Well, I would say, because I would add an extra bit on, so I would say it should read, the hirer shall ensure that any activities for children comply with the provisions of the Children Act 1989 and other relevant legislation and, that, and only fit and proper per, per persons have access um, to and supervision of the children. Good wording. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Councillor Alvan. I'm sorry, I just not noticed a typo in <laughs> paragraph 12. So there is a second line from bottom. Council has got an extra I in it. Council yield. Okay, right. Are there any further comments or amendments that members would like to propose? Councillor North, I think you proposed it. Are you happy with all the I amendments? I'm happy with the additional amendments. Councillor Foster, are you happy with all the additional amendments? <laughs> in that case, we'll go to a vote. All those in favour of accepting this? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Which brings us on then to item for information, item 10A. 
no, sorry, 09C, energy broker, sorry, I'm missing things out here. Item 9C, energy broker update report. Um, Mr. Young's any update to the report? The, the general um, idea is that uh, because our, our gas contract is running out at the end of uh, April and our electricity contract running out at the end of June, um, it's, it's quite important that we, we make speedy progress with um, employing a, a broker to, to get us some quotes in. Okay. Um, Councillor Bond. I'm quite surprised to see this report because we've now discussed this on now two occasions and we were promised detail as to what was actually happening regarding the contracts. And this is not giving us detail regarding the pricing, which we were actually being promised because we've had clear um, contradictions in what we've been told and what these reports are saying. So my, my understanding is the purpose of this report is for us to agree a broker who will then come with all the pricing for the next council meeting so that the decisions on the actual way forward would be made at the council meeting. That's my understanding of the proposal. Um, I wasn't at the last council meeting, so I don't know what discussions were had there. I wasn't either, but I understand that to be the case. And of course, there were, there were um, member observations connected to the fact that any specialist provider should be perhaps um, not um, be cognizant of any relationship with any provider, but should be paid perhaps as a separate entity that that wouldn't then motivate any advice that they give to the council. Councillor Storm. Yes, now if I recollect my weekend correctly, I did spend some time on SharePoint looking at various comparisons from brokers on this, which was very difficult to actually achieve um, in terms of comparisons as to who was best, because some were quoting fees, which weren't quite, when you try to read them together, on, it, was, it was confusing, if I may say so. And the other thing that causes me concern on this is that we may be paying a fee, but some of those brokers were making reference to receipt of commission. Now, if they're receiving commission and they rebate it to us, yes, please, if they're charging a fee, but I'm not sure exactly what it was. So on that basis, I'm unhappy about selecting a particular broker from those brokers that were there, simply because I couldn't, in my limited technical ability really equate them evenly um, and it would be very helpful if we'd actually had a, a comparative paper rather as I think when we went out to tender for um, the website setting out the pros and cons because I think it was that paper and I think some members actually had quite a degree of input into that I found that was actually an excellent presentation as to a tender process this one, having looked at SharePoint, which is something I tend not to do, I'm afraid, um, I was I ended up more confused than I was at the beginning. So um, those are my observations, but I don't know what other councillors think. Councillor Knight. Thank you. So I largely agree. Um, I, I wonder, do officers have a recommendation of the, the four different brokers that are mentioned? Because it, it seems to me there's the pricing, which may vary from time to time and exactly when they looked at the market and then the ancillary services they provide. And, and to my mind, I'd, I'd like to know a little bit more about the services that the broker provides and are they all offering the same service? Will any of them check our bills? Will any of them ensure that, for example, if, if, uh, if our um, energy provider was to try to change the terms of the agreement, they would act proactively to ensure we weren't caught by that. I think that's important information for us to understand. Yes, I, I completely agree with that. And um, <clears throat> one of the reasons that we didn't do a, a comparative table was because each of them were, were really offering something completely different. So, so it was very difficult to do that. Um, but we can certainly make... Can we have a um, from, from a discussion uh, amongst the, the three officers, um, number one, um, just because uh, they came across uh, as more professional, um, they uh, responded to emails much quicker. Um, so yeah, they, they, they would seem like, like they would be um, good to work with. Okay. 
Um, I, I mean, I'll make a couple of comments in the chair and then I'll, I'll go back to other members. I mean, a couple of the thoughts I had on this. Um, firstly, regarding the gas, we've got two premises that have gas. I would have thought um, potentially that's something we could source um, prices and quotes for directly from suppliers ourselves or using com standard comparison websites ourselves without using a broker because we're looking at spending what in excess of um or getting on for two thousand pounds on brokerage fees that seems an awful lot for just two premises where we could if we only had our own premises with one single premises you would just go out and find a gas price i would have, I would have thought so that's a, the first point i had um regarding gas i think there potentially is more scope on the electricity because of the number of um, premises. Um, if that gives us any um, sort of negotiating power, having multiple, but my, my re recollection from last time we had the broker here and we were looking at that, they were almost, it was a, just a group of separate deals as opposed to in any way looking at negotiating it as a package. So I don't know if we get any benefit really on that either um so so they were just a, a couple of thoughts for for me on it really um councillor knight sorry just one other thing to mention when we've talked about quotes before that have placed on sharepoint exclusively for members we agreed that they wouldn't be redacted so again i'm not sure why these are redacted because that really precludes us making any of our own sort of inquiries into the, the, the businesses involved um, uh, I don't think we have any choice but to, to defer this this evening, to be honest, to a, to a future meeting. So I think that's my proposal. Councillor Lusson. I have to say that I'm unable to take part in this discussion because I haven't been on SharePoint and I do not like to be presented with a report like this without any further detail. Because like Councillor Storm, I don't like trying to use SharePoint. We have asked for proper training on it. It's been deferred till after the election, which makes quite perfect sense. But and then until then, we need proper reports that give us the detail we need. So I can't make any comment at all. OK, so Councillor Knight has proposed we defer it. I think Councillor Foster seconded that. Any um, further comments, Councillor Bond? I'm still coming back to what's been discussed on two occasions before. And still, again, we still haven't got a clear understanding of what's happened about, the, um, about these contracts we were assured before that there were any issues it was only with the electric one we last meeting we had we were told there was an issue with the gas one i really would like to understand what's happened and actually what we've been paying that's that's what's been asked more than one occasion i still haven't got an answer to it and i've got no idea of a time scale when it's going to be available to us so we can actually learn from our lessons and make this learn from these mistakes and make sure it doesn't happen again but also to have transparency so we can actually see what's happened so just to comment on that, my understanding is the issue is always with the gas supply and there's never been any issue with the electricity one. Um, so I don't know if you got mixed there, but um, Mr. Young or the clerk may be able to confirm I think you can answer one part of the question, but I, if my recollection is correct, after having two weeks of annual leave, we had a lessons learned paper that I wrote several weeks ago that highlighted the issues around how this might have been managed better and made some recommendations to members who then resolved to support the recommendations that I made. So that if we remember that report, that was discussed at the time in detail. Rob, would you like to add to that? Any volumetrics or detail? Is there anything else you'd like to further add about our understanding of the situation? or information that hasn't been shared with members? I'm taking that as a no, so Councillor Foster. My recollection is that the last council meeting we talked about this and that we asked for a breakdown of it uh, to come to the next, I think it was a full council meeting, wasn't it? So that we, we have a clear understanding. I think because the, uh, the, 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 I think we originally had the idea of perhaps it could come to the next FNGP, but because it was too close, we, uh, we felt that probably that was not appropriate. So I think... Uh, my expectation would be that the next full council meeting will have a breakdown of the the issues and uh, sort of the, the rates, etc. I think that's not unreasonable. So, if that's something that I've misinterpreted, uh, then perhaps uh, the uh, the clerk could review the uh, uh, 
uh, I guess the, the text or from the, from the minutes of the previous meeting, just to get a cl clarity. But my expectation is the next council meeting will have detail. Uh, in terms of this, I, I completely agree with, with colleagues here. I mean, the comparisons are very difficult to make. It, it would be much easier, and, and I appreciate that Ms. Young saying that, you know, trying to make a direct comparison, but once it, some seems to be brokerage charges only, some seem to be an additional penny per increased rate. I think we just need some, as much as possible, some clarity about what they are, and also recommendations from officers to say, we would recommend this and the reason for it. And, and again, in an ideal world, we wouldn't have everything going through SharePoint because there are this we, sh we should be wherever possible keeping this as transparent as possible so that residents can understand what we're doing. If it's redacted, then the residents should be, should be able to view this. Okay. Okay. So we've got a proposal to defer this. Um, I believe, yeah, the expectation from the last council meeting i wasn't there is that it would come to the next council meeting anyway so effectively we're deferring it to the next council meeting um all those in favor of that you show that's unanimous thank you so we now do move on to item 10a the finance review update any updates to your report I do <coughs> Sorry, um, just really that uh, good progress is, is being made. Um, and over the next uh, few few weeks, as we go go over year end, um, again, uh, significant progress should be made. There's one paper tonight um, about the internal auditor, um, which will uh, knock another one, one of the five off. Um, but really coming to by the beginning of, of August, um, hopefully all of these should have been done. Okay, thank you. Any comments? I'll happy to note it. Yep. Okay, next item then, um, 10B Unity Trust Bank update. Any updates to the report? I'll just take as read. Comments? Yes. Oh, sorry. Oh, so, sorry. Yeah. Um, just just one, one very quick update. Um, we now do have the um, uh, cash and cash encashment facility has now uh, been moved from St. Louis to Huntingdon because the St. Louis branch is, is closing. Thank you. Councillor North. <clears throat> yeah, it's just now, now West. Do you mean now West? Mm -hmm. Not Lloyd's. Then. Of course, we're, we're doing away with Lloyd's, aren't we? Well, all I would say is that no, so now West have a deal with Unity Bank, the Unity Trust, right? but it just seems like a long way to go. I mean, can't we do get Cash from a bank in Biggleswade or Sandy or, or somewhere a bit nearer than Huntington. It's quite a long way, isn't it? That's all right. Can you? The short answer to your question is is no. Um, it's, it so happens that um, we have the uh, advantage of having a finance manager where that actually is on their way. So from the point of view of it doesn't incur any additional time to us because that's Rob's direction of travel. So that begs the question when that certain person is on a holiday or off sick and we desperately need cash. I'm glad to see the new system's working well, she says sarcastically. Sorry, Chairman. I think I would add something, and I think I hope Rob can um, elucidate on regard to this, that, that cash is most definitely something that we try and stay away from as at all possible and is a rare event here. Is that right? So that's exactly right. And um, we're, we're really only taking cash out about once uh, every two months. And so that really shouldn't be an issue. Okay. Councillor North, you, were you? Well, I was, just, I was going to say, can't we get a, a debit card to use a cash machine? Anyway, never mind. Okay, any further comments? Councillor Storm. Yes, I'm not happy on this. This is a further erosion of the services to the people of the town. People still need cash. Not everybody has cards or other means of paying. We have to provide that service. When we had our last bank, one of the reasons we moved from the Nat West to Lloyd's as a local bank was because we had the ability to get cash. 
um, I would be asking that we ask our officers to uh, make arrangements with Unity Trust to find a means of making an ability to have cash available within the town. Um, as has been said, it's all very well with my Mr. Young's is in the appropriate place to um, um, subsidise Unity Trust in terms of the provision of cash. Um, I don't think it's good enough from the point of view. I, I think it's worth making clear that the only cash we withdraw from the bank is to top up our petty cash, which is done very infrequently. And it, this doesn't in, impact on our ability to accept cash and pay cash into the bank, because we do that, I believe, through the post office. Is that right? But in terms of withdrawing the cash, that's the only, which we do what, a, once every couple of months at most. That's all that's impacted by this change. Councillor Knight. So am I right to assume that the amount of cash we receive from car parking machines and market traders, some of whom still use cash, is not sufficient to meet our petty cash needs? Because if it was, we just don't have to bank all of that cash. Um, and if that is the case, I understand the clerk does have a debit card, so can appropriate arrangements and controls be put in place so that debit card can be used to withdraw cash from ATMs? Um, I, I personally do do agree with that. Um, I think uh, myself and the clerk have probably had discussions on this um, and perhaps have a different point of view. Um, I think uh, the clerk would potentially say that from an auditor point of view, um, it's very good to keep uh, clear lines, um, which is probably why my, my own suggestion was, was rejected. And to add to that, I think um, um, I try not to get into a situation where there is a crisis situation where we require me to use a debit card to access cash. I think it's inappropriate and I would rather stay away from it. We need clean separate lines from an audit perspective. But this is not an issue for us. This is a rare thing. We don't do it very often. And Councillor Pullinger's description of, of the operational circumstances was wholly correct. Any further comments? Do we note this? Thank you. So that brings us on to the item 10C, Verments Quarterly Report. Okay, move on then um, to item 10D, Finance Department, Major Work, Quarter 1. For any questions or comments? We noted it then. Yeah, no, Councillor Russell. Can I just say that I'm really pleased that we're bringing in a new chart of accounts and I look forward to new management accounting arrangements and I hope that the next finance and general purposes in the new council can lay out exactly what those management accounting reports are going to be that we're going to receive on a monthly basis. Yeah. Any further comments? Are we noting this then? Thank you. So that brings us on to... 10 E. No. Yeah, 10 E. General insurance policy renewal. Ah, oral update. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. It's Kareem here. Mr. Um, Kareem here. Oh, he's on line, is he? Yeah, sorry. So just to provide an oral update on this. Um, so on the general insurance policy renewal, officers met with the um, broker we usually use um, in back in early March. We reviewed the policy and provided a, a slightly amended fidelity guarantee, uh, which had gone up slightly um, due to the PWLB uh, exposure, funds exposure we have in our accounts. The broker confirmed that the market currently is very challenging indeed um, and went off. And oh, with come in. Gone. We haven't heard anything you've said up to this point because oh. we had no sounds. So can you start again, please? Sure. Can you hear me now? Yes. Great. Sorry about that. So, OK. So uh, in terms of the general insurance policy renewal, um, officers met with our usual broker uh, who provides the service to us um, in early March. 
uh, we reviewed the policy line by line for all the assets, and we slightly amended the fidelity guarantee, um, which is the amount of uh, funds held by across our various accounts and funds. Um, we reviewed that, put that slightly up um, due to the PWLB funds exposure that we have. Um, the broker at the time confirmed to us that the market is extremely challenging uh, from the perspective of um, insurers' availability uh, for quotes. Uh, we instructed him to go away and, and bring us back at least three firm quotes for insurance. He came back after a few days, um, providing us with a renewal quote from our existing provider, uh, which had gone up very slightly in terms of premium due to the, as I've mentioned before, the fidelity guarantee. Um, and also, of course, inflation as, as they currently stand. But he also confirmed that no other quotes uh, were, were he could he wasn't he was not able to obtain other quotes, and um, included um, the fact that two other large insurers had um, declined to submit quotes as these would be either uncompetitive or they were not able to match the requirements that were, our existing policy has in place. Um, he then therefore told us, basically re recommended to us that we should uh, agree to the quote so that we have in hand. So from next week, um, we'll be writing, we'll be preparing a written report for town council. Um, at the moment, as it stands with the recommendation that members agree to suspend fi financial regulations and to proceed with renewing the um, existing quote that we have uh, to hand. Um. Can I just be clear, Karim, that there's there's obviously a detailed paper coming from members next week that explains properly what you've just, just described and then exactly. the opportunity be, to make a decision, yeah? Yeah, that's right. There'll be much more detail. Yeah. We're not, you're not asking for a decision at this point in time? No, it's just an oral update telling us how things stand at, the, at present. Okay. Um, can you tell us, Krim, what sort of percentage increase we're talking in terms of the quote? Uh, my understanding is it's 7.6% up, which the broker was telling us is actually, <laughs> sounds ridiculous, but relatively okay, given the current situation. He also, did, just so you're aware, um, he, he quoted us for a single year and multi-year policies, the multi-year year on year is actually slightly cheaper. However, um, he, he recommended we go with single years given the challenging environment. Okay, thank you. Councillor Russell. I think we do need a proper paper from Kappa Council and it's been normal in the past for Council to agree the level of fidelity that we need and various other key items in the policy. So um, there's been nothing as far as I know for this renewal and I think we do need to see exactly what we're getting and I'm very concerned that we're getting one quote and being told that's the best way to go. I, I need to see enough to be convinced of that and I hope that's going to be in the paper. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Storm. Um, in view of the fact that this broker can only obtain one quote, and I understand that's quite often the way with insurance now, is it worth going to trying another broker to see if they can get any more quotes? So, I, th I think we need to add some clarity here, Karim. Can we just be clear that actually the brokers, the broker that we use effectively has 70% coverage of the whole uh, town council market. So in a sense, it is, has wide coverage. Is that correct? That's right. That broker is a large player. And in, in, in response to Councillor Strawn's um, suggestion, you're absolutely right. We have approached other brokers to get other quotes. We have not been successful so far with another broker who actually responded saying um, that the uh, the market is again challenging and actually the pool of insurers used is very similar to the to the um, broker that we already have. We've also gone to a couple of other companies and are awaiting quotes back from them, although they have told us this will not is likely they're likely not to come back in time. Mm. So and, that's where we're at. And can we just clarify again for members, please, that in answer to Councillor Russell's question, the fidelity elements connected to your written paper will have been advised by internal order. Is that correct? That's correct. Our internal Thank order you. suggested that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any further comments from members? So happy to note the all report. Okay. Thank you. Um, so that brings us on to the second public open session. Is there anyone online? No. Okay. 
In that case, uh, we come to item 12. They've got a number of exempt items. Someone move that we move to exempt. Move it. 